Um, this is a basic lecture for medical students that uh, we give to medical students prior to them starting their rotation in the operating theater. And so the basic objectives, so can I go to the next slide, are to go over uh, mask ventilation, and that is manual ventilation by using a mask, and then talk a little bit about laryngoscopy and tracheal intubation. Now, as you know, anesthesia is not just having people go to sleep and watching them asleep and then having them wake up. It's more that, that you have to have a knowledge of cardiology, pulmonology, and a variety of other specialties. But some of the basics include management of the airway. And if you can ventilate somebody by mask, you can actually save somebody's life, particularly if, you're, if somebody uh, faints or stops breathing. These are some of the techniques you can use as lifesavers. So can I go to the next slide? Um, so the goal of this lecture the, uh, is to, uh, next is to basically show that when somebody stops breathing, you first observe and then you actively participate by manipulating the airway so that you allow breathing and ventilation. Uh, just remember for breathing, air goes in and out, oxygen mainly, and for ventilation has to do with the, the uh, carbon dioxide leaving the body. Next. So the key things when you see somebody who's passed out is to, before you participate, before you actively manipulate, is to first observe. Uh, just remember, when you stick a mask down on somebody's face and try to breathe for them, it's very, very stimulating, and they may not like that. Uh, it's like being kissed and the other person not letting go of your lips. You don't always like that. Uh, so the key thing is to communicate, find out what's really going on, and then start uh, actively um, getting to uh, man manipulate the airway. Now, I have a little vignette, and I don't know if this is going to work, but I, I usually give it to the medical students in our medical school. And l let me put you in a scenario where you are the medical student and you're taking your patient down to the CT scanner for a head CT with contrast. So the patient's doing fine, and after a while, the patient receives some dye and has difficulty breathing. Uh, her oxygen saturation, which was previously 99%, now drops to 88%. So I was going to ask somebody in the audience what they would do, how they would handle this. Any response? Okay, I'll answer. So the key thing is to observe the patient. Make sure the object is... If they're not, then they could be obstructing. So you can manipulate the airway, pull up on the jaw, pull the tongue forward to try and create a patent airway. And maybe the, the flow of air will, will, will improve and they will start breathing better and their sats will go up. Next slide. In some of these cases, though, you may have to give some uh, supplemental oxygen. And these are available in several different forms. Uh, the easiest way is to use nasal cannula. And I know we have them in the US, I know you have them in France. And these will increase the fraction of inspired oxygen. So if the saturations were going down, they will start to go back up. But the patient has to be breathing, okay? If the patient is apneic, what do you do? Next slide. So the key thing, and this is the basics of airway management, the basics of anesthesia, I would say, is to learn how to deliver oxygen by mask. In other words, how to manually ventilate a patient. And it's very important that you do this because you can save somebody's life. And the key thing here, and it's very, very simple, is how do you hold a mask? And you have to use your hand with your um, third, fourth, and little finger below the jaw and use your thumb and your index finger on the top of the mask so you maintain a tight seal but at the same time with your third, fourth and little finger be, you're able to pull up on the jaw and maintain sniffing position and a position that would help you deliver air. This is a next slide please. 
This is another view of it. So this is a key to basically ha having, being, to being able to successfully mask ventilate a patient. Next slide. And the key pressure you put is at the top of the mask with your thumb and the index finger and with your three fingers at the bottom. Uh, next slide. And this is shown here with the arrows. So that's where you apply the pressure. You need a tight seal so that your reservoir bag, which you're ventilating the patient, fills and doesn't stay empty. Next slide, please. Now, a little bit about oxygen delivery circuits. You can, if you're next to an anesthesia machine, if you're next to a ventilator, that's easy. But in a lot of cases, you will need to have either an AMBU bag or a, an anesthesia portable circuit, such as the one shown here. Now, this particular circuit is called the Jackson Reese circuit or the Mapleson D. And if you look carefully, there are some arrows. At D, that's where the oxygen comes in, and that's where that's where the oxygen is delivered. It has a very short connector, so it limits the amount of dead space. So it's a very efficient way of delivering oxygen. You're limiting dead space. On the other hand, you have a valve at the other end at A, which limits the amount of oxygen in the in the pressure of the gas in the bag. So if you have a little kid, you can basically have a lower pressure. If you have somebody with um, restrictive lung disease, such as emphysema, you can avoid giving high pressure breaths and causing uh, blebs to break off and cause pneumothorax. Next slide, please. In most co countries, and especially in Western countries, most circuits also, uh, most transport of patients and in the operating theater as well as in the ICUs and in the wards will carry these other type of uh, circuits and they're, to us they're known as AMBU bags and these are circuits that you can connect to an oxygen source or if you run out, if you're stuck in the elevator with an empty tank you can still help somebody breathe because you can still ventilate them with room air. Next slide. So how do you tell if you're truly ventilating a patient? There are several ways of telling. The first thing is, of course, you watch the chest moving. Watch the chest go up and down. If you have a stethoscope, you can auscultate and hear breath sounds. If you have a pulse oximeter, which is a standard, you have to watch for oxygen saturation. And if you're lucky enough to have a capnograph, you can also look at end tidal carbon dioxide. That is the carbon dioxide that's exhaled. Now, if in this patient you try to auscultate and you cannot appreciate or you cannot hear air movement, the next thing to do is to help yourself by using some augmented, uh, next slide please, devices that will help you reduce the obstruction. Now, the, the one organ that causes obstruction in airways is the tongue. And you can use devices such as nasal airways shown here and which come in different sizes which will push the tongue aside and give you a pain air. If the patient is sleepier or uh, not responsive, next slide, you can you can use what's called an oral airway and this fits directly in the mouth and it once again pushes the tongue and some of the redundant tissue away and you have a pain airway. So over these you can push, put your mask and you can continue squeezing the bag and manually ventilating. They help maintain a patent open airway. 